out of the box into the green and the blue, drafting an epistemology for post-humanist interrelatedness. We live in challenging times. Not only white men and not only white old men fight back the culture of diversification. They, however, will not stop the flow of time. And not because we want it to be alike. The thesis of this paper is that there is a new kind of epistemological thinking evolving that emerges from our new information-driven world. The path it takes changes our understanding of the world, of science and the human values. This new epistemology, I think, will be irreversible. Our knowledge will change in the shape of information technology and the information distribution at hand, at any place, in any place, in any context. I sketch out how our life will change in the light of this big data information and reflect with you how our attitude towards our understanding and knowledge of the world will change. In doing so, I propose that binary ontologies and semantics will vanish. We are going towards a new understanding of science while we move towards a new understanding of interrelatedness. What is the box we want to get out of? The fundaments of the European knowledge culture can be traced back to Aristotle. But again, it is not limited neither to Europe nor to Aristotle. This kind of knowledge in the box is spread all over the world. It is important to understand that it is not a unique European phenomenon. So, but what is the knowledge in the box? And let us take and stay with that example of Aristotle's organization of knowledge, which is quite clear. There is a part and a whole, and the whole is more than the parts. Aristotle's ontology defines also the end of each entity. This ontology determined by the fact that each entity is part of a whole and each part is consequently determined in its end. That is, in regard of what we become, the ends of our activities are already and essentially defined being part of something. And this is true for all chains, of course, of here, of known entities as parts of wholes. Aristotle defines a society alike. There is a house, and this house belongs to a man, and parts of this house are a wife and a slave and the children. The community is a collection of men, and as this collection are wholes, these wholes are equal among each other, and all together they are again more than the parts and as the sum of this. As the sum is more as, uh, than its parts, these men's community defines what is true and right in the collection of these houses, that is, its boxes. In the scientific sphere, this hierarchy of entities forms our trees of knowledge and also the trees of knowledge that are behind the computing information uh, uh, capabilities. It defines function and end and determines the right way how to proceed and the right position of any entity. Each plant and animal and person is in this box and the ontology of the boxes defines its place in the hierarchy of knowledge. This is where our science is based upon to understand this essential determination of any entity as being a part of and the sum of other parts, and this is the basic of all relations we rely upon. There is no way our striving to be different within the box and to leave the box. So the cherry trees and in its bearing of cherries, the nice knife's function is to be cut. Our cause, uh, of course, there is a lot of critique and has always been against this kind of thinking and against Aristotle, as the proposition does not add anything new to what there is, as this is always a definition of what it is. So as I mentioned above, this view has always, subjected, has always been subjected to critique. 
Nevertheless, it became a dominant view in science and formulated cultural habits. 500 years ago, however, the anti-Aristotelian movement became so strong and for a certain period, it looked as if it were going down. In Aristotle, the ontological architecture of parts and wholes often was built upon visual impression. What is the whole and what are the parts of it? So the causes, in that sense, to determine the causes of things that were visible, sensorily uh, uh, perceivable. And this is what he did with the position of the Earth, um, claiming that the Earth is in the middle of the universe because everything is falling down, so the Earth is somehow an aggregation of these things. Um, Copernicus, however, as we know, turned this box upside down and hereby turned perspective completely. So, and this became also a turn in the cultural perspective at that time. Everything could also see, be seen differently. The Earth was no longer in the center of the universe and women protested to be reduced to the seed sack of procreation. This is, there, uh, there is a famous woodcut scratched by Hans Baldung Green, a student from Dürer in the year of 1502, which is spread all over Europe, and it illustrates this reversal of the viewpoint. It shows Phyllis riding now on Aristotle. This is, so all turned upside down and the world turned <laughs> around and what was below is now upon and the women are now riding their males. Uh, this was of course a provocation, a ironic provocation, but this is also the time when women claimed excellence over men, for example, in the very often published a book by Lucrezia Marinella on the excellence of women and the thoughts of males. Emerge, so, of course we know that, that Aristotle had already designed his epistemology against Plato. That is, that Plato had a different idea uh, how we get knowledge and how we define what knowledge is. From the point of view of the rewriting the history, it's therefore interesting to see not only that this era of which I spoke, the humanist and the Renaissance era, is now presenting Plato and with Plato Diotima, Diotima as the teacher of Socrates. The analogy of coming to knowledge is now childbirthing. It is now giving birth to a child. This is the kind of growing knowledge and this is a completely different idea of uh, uh, how we present and how we define our epistemology. So it's Theotima in his in Plato's Symposium who rebukes exactly the young Socrates view that knowledge would be built upon this you know, that we could define what something is, as we cannot define, as everything is always in the growing in the middle of two. In Diotima, knowledge is defined as this emerging process of knowing. What seems contradictory is even the best basis to starting to strive and to overcome the difference by creating something new out of this process. It's interesting because, so this time, the early modern, this rediscovery of the Platonic thinking and of this different way of emerging knowledge thinking is of course also present. There is a lot to be said on Hegel, his relation to his sister and so on. And, the, um, and very rightly, I think Frederick Beiser named this phase in Germany the philosophy of Diotima's children. So this creative process, so Diotima, is the world's way to eternity. The Renaissance now is famous exactly for its critique of Aristotle, while Plato and Diotima became the idols of the epoch. And it is quite understandable, uh, but I want to add that, that this 
time span also contributed to a massive change in the cultural acknowledgement of women, as we see in many examples. Goodness is no longer defined by the fulfillment of function. The good is not defined by completion of the end, but from a perspective of intellectual growth, overcoming diversities and sensed confinements. What we know and the extent to which we know or how we access information has changed now. And I understand that our information technology is, to a certain extent, a consequence from that, and that we uh, step in this direction, at least with an understanding, as I like to present it here, on our technology and the results for our uh, understanding of the world. This growth of information that we are living in, in the technology uh, era now, will change our access to knowledge and the binary model of cognition will be replaced. So I will explain why I think this is the fact. Although information technology, so information technology today is based on the old ontology of the parts and wholes. Uh, there is no doubt on that. It is working like that. But as you, you know, is quantum uh, uh, computing is now on its way and it works very differently. I do not talk about these differences here in the epistemological realm, but I think it's very important to understand that this technology is not the end of uh, our technologies and how knowledge is aggregated, but we are also in, within a development of different kinds of aggregation of knowledge, and this will also become quicker in the future. Now we have lived for perhaps a few 800 or 1,000 years in a knowledge aggregation system as the part and whole system. So let's talk now about this old system and when we become aware of this old system that is now fixed in our technology. The former relation of our understanding. So before we had this technology among us, the former relation of our understanding was fixed as one, was fixed in a binary way. That is, as one of the observer and the observed. It resulted, therefore, in the actor and the acted upon. Usually this was a subject on nature and so on. Nature was thou the resource of, of our knowledge, but it was the human being who acted upon. The information we have today interrupts this binary scheme. A third element, just as constant as we and the in brackets, natural world, it is every world, um, shapes our world of knowledge. So in the words of Diotima, we have now a child born between our relation with nature that is a child that is able to give a description of the world within the knowledge system of parts and wholes and design within that knowledge system. This child has grown out of our constructive mind. Beyond the observer and its object, it is a third element within the uh, knowledge gaining process. This third element changes our knowledge relation, which until then had only existed in two components. And it is so created by us, now a merely independent part from us. We are no longer the single actor and news provider. This knowledge generation by the information machine attacks not only our human superiorism, but also many conventional beliefs that we have created and founded in our world of knowledge hierarchies and within our binary acting and perceiving system. 
We are getting far from box knowledge as we are overwhelmed by information. Looking for holes and parts cannot fulfill the job anymore. We discover the world now again, this is not a new invention, this is an old system, via analogies again. These analogies reveal astonishing structures and environments, invariances and surprisingly bind together what has never been put in, in one knowledge box so far. We learn to see the world in a very different way as the elements of information provided for us add two things. First, as said above, it interrupts the conventional binary knowledge construction. Secondly, it is not strictly subjected to the knowledge box system. Although it once emerged from it, its algorithms, as we know, act partly independently on connections and similarities, sometimes the most stupid at first sight because we can't re-identify it in the real world. And surprising ones create new entities as they find arbitrary patterns. But sometimes these patterns we couldn't have had, the t we didn't have had the time up to now to find that. And you know that in medical research and so on, these patterns, or in many ways, such patterns are searched for by machines. Or, for example, in mathematics, as we have heard yesterday. Following from this, we are enforced to proceed differently than we did before. We discover parallels and notice overlaps among things we judge being repellent and contrarian in the box world. All is turned upside down. Perspectives become multidimensional. So, how does this change our knowledge? Question and answer are now posed differently. The question is no longer if something is part of something. Instead of a hierarchical box-pressed thinking, we perceive differences that could not be pressed into a box. A reductive ontology is replaced by a growing and expanding epistemology that changes our science as difference and diversity become now an ideal to act upon as a knowledge resource in the reservoir. Out of the box into the green and the blue we jump and we re-ontologize our understanding of nature and the social world. The information providing machines are no longer, are not, the information providing machines are not only, or do not only become relevant partners in our lives. We do not longer fear to have to compete with them or to be similar in anyhow. When we calculate, we do not compete with calculation machines. When we judge, we do not compete with their judgment. Our task is to move forward in shaping our understanding of the world on the basis of this third partner in our epistemology. That is based on the fact that diversity, and I would like to explain why this triangulized epistemological um, situation now is the basis of a different approach to diversity as the cause of well-being and flourishing and uh, to give an example of how this new uh, epistemology is, uh, um, um, is performing or to illustrate that. So the new epistemology is a triangular epistemology that, will ne that nests us differently into nature and society than we have ever perceived before. Algorithmic methods, new ways of knowledge aggregation and changing assemblages of knowledge clusters re-ontologize our world. And a simple example illustrates that. Take the apple as a part of our fruit box. Part whole ontology tells us that there is also chromium in the apple. Calcium, potassium and phosphorus are all to be found in the apple. No problem to define this with a part whole uh, uh, analysis. 
What this ontology of boxes not shows to you is that chromium is relevant to your health. You have to jump out of your box to understand that. It is, so if you have a system that goes on that, you have not immediately a system that goes on the other. It is difficult to understand and to research. Of course, you know, of course it's our simple uh, example to illustrate what I want to uh, say. Of course, now our doctors have understood because the doctors know that potassium and chromium is good for our health. But it goes now also, um, so what it takes is the velocity, and this is the velocity and the permanent intrusion of knowledge that will change our habits to it. So it is difficult to understand and to search for how these things are connected to each other in the box world. And the connection does not end with the apple and our health, but of course it goes further. The more you know, the, this is what this is the conclusion from that. The more you know, the more you understand that instantly you are connected to the plants and the apples and the soil and the water and so on. Because this chromium goes this way. And so you understand all the way more how the things are connected to each other. You learn to understand how things in the world are connected and this is why diversity becomes a value in itself. It is why you must have people who care for plants only growing in little places in the world, therefore understood to be an invaluable richness for us, for example, for a certain kind of medicine. You are in search now for these um, particularities for these specialities as it is no longer of interest to make things equal but it is now of interest in this new kind of understanding to find as much differences and then to find the analogies between the differences. As you have this big data momentum and you have this possibility to find new knowledge by this big data. So um, diversity thus becomes a value for this huge data uh, uh, society. And overlooking differences and shaping a new content out of it is what adds something to the world, namely new insights, new knowledge. This methodology, of course, differs from the former one and emerges also a different kind of knowledge. They learn about this kind of interconnectedness and through it, they learn new connections and gain new insights. And this is then, consequently, how knowledge grows. Nature must thus appear new to us. It is no longer our object. Rather, we are nested in it in this interrelational world. We understand it as an important and necessary part of ourselves. So this is the overcoming of the humanist area, the superiorist era. It is now a genuine enhancer of our well-being. It leads to our sense of well-being, not because we instrumentalize it, but because we understand that our survival is tied to it as a resource of our knowledge growth. And this way of understanding the world can now also be transferred into the blue, that is, into the social world. The more we know, the fewer hindrances and frontiers arise between utmost differences. The more extensive and diverse the basic of our knowledge is, the more comprehensive is what we are able to know. Now, so, so to conclude on that, Neither the first world, the part whole ontology, could present truth to us. This will also not be the fact done by this other epistemology that I am presenting here. I'm convinced we are on the way of looking for these epistemologies. And I'm absolutely sure that by means of our new technologies, we will now rush 
it's quicker and quicker and quicker from the one ontological featuring the world to another one. So neither world can picture truth. But I think that this new one is a bit more truth-like. Our epi epistemological reliability changes from a recursive logical function world, pictured yeah, world, on the ladder of ontological architecture. We are now striving and heading to identify what is there by means of similarities. With the new methods, we got the possibility of reconceptualizing our world again, our understanding of science, nature, humans in the age of VI. It serves to overcome the units that confined our world into hierarchical orders that do not allow us to see the richness of what is, but is survived to establish the dominion of the boxes. So mapping the multitude, a new epistemology. These new methodologies will change our world, the economy, education, medicine. The new goal is the science of individualized and diversified needs. Now we establish the values of quality instead of quantity in economics, medicine and education. You don't need much, but you need the right thing. If you need this special chromium potassium, you have to know the whole world to see, like in medicine, you know, you have to see which come up, which blood type comes up next to what you are in need for. So knowledge is in this different way now a resource and must be hugely diversified. We de-individualize and we re and we identify our world. It's a mm -hmm. quote from Floridi. We are part of the knowledge structure and part of the universe of the green and the blue. It also changes our idea of the superiority of man's world and epistemic violence. The turn from a primary hierarchy and function driven into a primary knowledge driven ontology comes along with an ontology of mutual interrelations, flexible in relation to what we see, stable in relation to what we know, striving to nest everything and everyone to a place of its utmost flourishing existence. There is no place for humanity's supremacy over nature and the cosmos, and certainly not one for a hierarchy of genders and races. Thank you. <laughs>